Hello students. Continuing with the lecture series of excretory system, today we will do the topic physiology of excretion and that is urine formation. Now before I begin with the lecture, please subscribe to get the latest updates on my lecture, uh, no, uh, lecture series and uh, please like, share and also post your comments and queries. Now on that note let's begin with today's topic that is urine formation you also call it physiology of excretion. Now you know kidneys are filtrating unit of our body and they filtrate about 1100 to 1200 ml of blood on an average then this comes from the heart. Now it involves I would want to tell you over here, this is one fifth of the blood that is pumped out from both the ventricles of the heart. So kidneys filter 1100 to 1200 ml of blood on an average and this comes from the heart. And in formation of urine, there are three ways, three main steps. First is Glomerular, uh, glomerular filtration, you also call it ultrafiltration. Second is tubular reabsorption and third is tubular secretion. So under these three steps, we learn the process of urine formation. First is glomerular filtration or ultrafiltration. Ultra, see filtration means to filter out and still the better filter. That is ultra. You say modern, ultra modern, violet, ultraviolet rays. So similarly, filtration, ultra filtration. So this is very fine filtration. And in this step, there would be filtration of blood in tubular reabsorption. Out of the total filtrate, glomerular filtrate, only 1% is allowed to move ahead in the tubule and 99% is reabsorbed back. And in tubular secretion, the toxic and the harmful substances are directly secreted in this DCT part. So, you remember the structure of nephron, I hope. So, this is, I just make, give you a quick brief revision. This is the Bowman's capsule. This is the duct of capillaries that is called glomerulus. The glomerulus is formed from efferent arteriole. This is the efferent arteriole which is part of renal artery and this is the efferent arteriole which leaves the glomerulus and it uh, forms a capillary network around the tubule and uh, it then joins the renal vein and this takes the blood back to the heart. Now here I would want to tell you that in I told you there are two kinds of nephrons. The first are the cortical nephrons which constitutes about 85% in human body and the other kind of nephrons were juxta medullary which I have already discussed in the last lecture. Now in cortical nephrons this capillaries are like uh, entangling around the tubules and then joining the renal vein and in juxtamedullary nephron they entangle the they, like entangle around the tubule plus they send a branch of capillary which runs parallel with the loop of Henle and such a structure is called as Vesa recta. So Vesa recta is important in juxta medullary nephrons, whereas it is absent or very less appreciated in cortical nephrons. Like loop of Henle runs deep into the medulla in juxta medullary nephrons. And in cortical nephrons, the loop of Henle is short. Similarly, you can say peritubular 
capillaries are present in cortical nephrons and vasa recta is present in juxta medullary nephrons so this are the capillaries which arises from the efferent arteriole they like uh, curve around they entangle the tubules and that would be the para paratubular capillaries the word is peri tubular peri means around so around the tubule so it is peri tubular capillaries and uh, for juxta medullary nephrons one of them if this branch is not there this is look, look this is running parallel to the loop of henle same, same way this is tube u shape loop of henle and this is also forming a u shaped structure so this is the vasa recta otherwise if there are capillaries around the tubules then those are the paratubular capillaries this you will learn in quite detail in higher standard for now this much is enough now ultra filtration we take up the first step what happens in ultra filtration now blood comes through the renal arteriole into the glomerulus so and this blood will be filtered in the glomerulus so first of all what is happening filtration of blood takes place in glomerulus point number 1 and if you need to filter anything that should be happen under pressure now pressure is exerted on in the glomerulus due to two reasons first is beating of the heart and second is due to the difference in do you see the difference in diameter see this is thinner and this is thicker Afferent or afferent arteriole is thicker, and efferent is efferent arteriole is quite comparatively thinner. And this difference of diameter, both together, they exert some pressure. If there is pressure, filtration would be fast enough. And another point which you have to remember: glomerular capillaries are more permeable than other normal capillaries then other blood capillaries in the body so this is what happens blood comes in the glomerulus through the efferent arteriole and it is filtered in this this is filtered so what forms the filtration membrane there are three structures which forms the filtration membrane first is endothelium of glomerular blood vessels so you know endothelium that is the capillary wall uh, like uh, capillary wall of glomerular uh, glomerulus would be called endothelium of glomerular blood vessels you know endothelium so first is the endothelium second is epithelium of bowman's capsule now this bowman's capsule is lined by epithelium so this epithelium would be working as another layer and the third is between this two i would write over here between this two there is another layer and that is called the basement membrane between the endothelium of glomerular capillary and so first of all there would be endothelium of glomerular capillaries so endothelium of glomerulus in between that is in between so that is the basement membrane and so this is the second thing the third thing would be the epithelium so that is the epithelial cells of bowman's capsule okay and these cells are special cells and they are called podocytes if i draw their structure it would be something like this podo means like toes 
So they look like this. So it is like this. They are close to each other. In between them, there are the slit pores. So blood is going to pass through this. So this is another cell that is the porocyte. These are the porocytes. In between there is the basement membrane and here you have the endothelial layer of the glomerulus. So blood passes through this, this and finally through this podocytes. So this is very delicately or you can say intricately designed and through this slit pores blood is going to come out and it comes out in this lumen. Now it is not blood now you call it glomerular filtrate so is this clear the filtration happens through three layers that is endothelium of glomerular blood vessels or glomerular blood capillaries second is epithelium of bowman's capsule and the third is the basement membrane which is in between the first and the third layer and blood passes through this and this Three layers, they act as, behave as filtration membrane. Now the blood that has come down from the this layers after filtration, now it will be referred to as glomerular filtrate. Now what comes down in the filtrate? What is the filtrate composed of? It contains all the components of blood plasma except proteins. It has all constituents of blood plasma except proteins. It has water, it has glucose, it has amino acids, it has ions like sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, bicarbonate, hydrogen ions and urea. So everything that is present in blood plasma is there except for Protein. So you can call this as deproteinized plasma without blood plasma without proteins that is uh, that is the glomerular filtrate. Now it is now going to pass this is the Bowman's capsule it has come out through the epithelium now it is going to enter the first part of tubule that is PCT. So this whole portion right from here till here that would be the tubule containing of different parts. As I told you this is PCT, loop of Henry, then again this twisted part, this is distal convoluted tubule and the short terminal part of DCT that is collecting tubule and this is the collecting duct. So the parts have been revised. Now we Look at what is going to happen in tubular reabsorption. Now volume of filtrate. I told you glomerular filtration rate is. This also I have mentioned in the last lecture. The glomerular filtration rate. So that is GFR. Glomerular filtration rate. That is about 125 ml per minute and that is about it amounts to 180 liters per day you have to remember this 180 liters of filtrate is occurring per day so it is about 90 bottles of 90 bottles of thumbs up whose capacity is about 2 liters 2 liters thumbs up bottles and the count is 90. That much of filtrate occurs in the nephron per day. That is a glomerular filtration rate. So volume of filtrate is about 180 liter per day. This is how much is filtered out. But the amount of urine produced is only, this much is filtered out and urine produced is only 1.5 liter per day. So what happens to the 99% of filtrate? It is reabsorbed back. So 1.5 means it suggests 99% of filtrate is reabsorbed by the renal tubules. And this reabsorption happens by active transport, 
like glucose, amino acid, sodium, they all will be absorbed, transported by active transport. There would be uh, absorption, there would be some substances which will be transported by passive transport and water will simple diffusion that is osmosis. So this is that is happening active transport, passive transport and osmosis. So substances will be reabsorbed back in 70% to 80%. I would say remember 70% of reabsorption is going to happen in PCT. That is proximal convoluted tubule. So maximum reabsorption occurs. See I have written here it is about 70 to 80% of electrolytes and water. So out of the filtrate that is coming in here, 70 to 80 percent is absorbed back. It, so it is going out in what medullary fluid in the surrounding fluid that is interstitial fluid, not medullary fluid. Here it is interstitial fluid, and from there it is going to enter into the capillaries. So this is what happens, and. Uh, why does it happen in PCT? As I told you in last lecture, PCT has brush bordered epithelium. Do you remember it now? And it is having the cuboidal epithelium. So it was something like this. I showed you the diagram also, the cube shaped cell. And uh, this is a basement membrane. And this is the nucleus. And here there would be the microvilli. And this epithelium has abandoned of mitochondria for assisting in active transport. You know active transport means utilization of ATP. In passive transport there is no expenditure of ATP and osmosis you know it is movement of solvent from region of higher concentration to region of lower concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. This all you have learned in lower standards. So this is what happens in first part that is PCT. Reabsorption is very less in loop of Henle but the osmolarity of the interstitial fluid is maintained. I told you previously, I think I, I told you about the thin and the thin segments of the nephron. The PCT has thin segment and the, uh, sorry, the descending limb of loop of Henle has thin segment and the ascending limb has the thick and the thin segment both. Here it is permeable to water. So water is going to go out. No electrolytes are allowed to go out. And over here, water is not allowed to go out, only electrolytes move out. So that maintains the concentration. So that is about tubular reabsorption. And by absorption, PCT helps in maintaining the pH and ionic balance. I'll teach you later after we complete tubular secretion. Now at DCT, what happens? There is secretion of metabolic waste directly into the filtrate by the tubular cells from the capillaries. It enters the tubular cells and directly there is secretion of metabolic waste like hydrogen ions, potassium ions, ammonia, drugs and toxins. These are directly put in the DCT and reabsorption. Reabsorption of NaCl, water and bicarbonate, these three things. These are reabsorbed and hydrogen, potassium, ammonia and drugs and toxins, these are secreted. This happens in the last part of the tubule that is VCT. Now that is all regarding the steps of urine formation. And after it enters in the collective tubule, there would be still absorption of water and urine that is formed is four times concentrated. The fluid that is going to arrive over here 
that would be four times concentrated than the initial glomerular filtrate. I have written here, human kidneys can produce urine nearly four times concentrated than the initial filtrate. So I give you a quick revision of this and then we move ahead with the topic. So there are three steps for urine formation. First is the ultrafiltration where the filtration is very fine. It occurs through first is endothelium of glomerular capillary, second is the basement membrane and third is the uh, epithelial lining of the Bowman's capsule. They have specialized cells called podocytes. So blood passes through it and whatever comes down in this part is called the filtrate. So the glomerular, the blood in the glomerulus is filtered out. So whatever is received over here, this is called the glomerular filtrate. And what is coming out? Every component of plasma is filtered out over here except the blood plasma. Plasma uh, proteins will not come inside here. Every component of blood plasma will be filtered except of bl blood proteins or you can say plasma proteins. If proteins are found in the filtrate, that indicates there is some damage or there is some problem in the kidneys. So you should always remember in the filtrate there will be no proteins, no plasma proteins ever found. It has every component except of proteins. So this is regarding the ultrafiltration and here you have to remember capillaries of glomerulus are more permeable. They are more permeable than any other blood capillary of the body. So that is the first thing that is ultrafiltration. Now this filtrate moves in the PCT loop of Henle and DCT. And uh, I told you glomerular filtration rate is about 125 ml per minute that amounts to 180 liter per day. So I gave you the example 90 bottles. What is the capacity? 2 liters. Okay, so 90 bottles of thumbs up which is having capacity of volume of 2 liters. That much fluid is filtered in here. Now, the urine production is only 1.5 liter. So that is, you can say 1500 ml only, 1500 ml. That is the maximum. So 99% of the fluid is reabsorbed back and Less of it is allowed to move forward. So all useful substances are taken back. They are moving out from this tubule into the interstitial fluid and then into the blood capillary, the paratubular capillary and then it is joining the circulation. So from here, just see this. There would be 99% of the filtrate that is reabsorbed or only 1.5 that is sent ahead that is the urine produced. So this happens by active transport, passive transport and osmosis. And maximum reabsorption happens in PCT as they are lined by the brush bordered epithelium or you can say cuboidal cells which are having lots of your numer numerous microvilli. And this helps in maintaining the pH and ionic balance. Now, you should know the pH of blood. The pH of blood is about, have you ever tasted the blood? It tastes alkaline. So, the pH of the blood is about, I will write pH, is about 7.35. Now, how is the alkanal, alkanality maintained? It is like secretion of bicarbonate ions, secretion or reabsorption. So, I write names of two ions. 
One is the bicarbonate ion and another is the hydrogen ion. H plus and HCO3 minus. So these are the bicarbonate, these are the hydrogen. These are giving acidic pH and this is giving the basic pH. So this secretion and reabsorption is managed in the kidney. If, the, if there is more acidic pH, it is towards acidic side, then more of hydrogen ions would be excreted and this would be reabsorbed. So by increasing or decreasing, so it is the absorption of either of these two ions, 7.4 pH is maintained. Okay. Another is ionic balance. You have sodium and potassium in the body and this is also managed. Sodium is reabsorbed, potassium is secreted out. So that manages the sodium potassium balance. So that is the ionic balance in the blood. Whatever be the ions, they are needed to be balanced. There is a fixed range for every ion, be it chloride, be it hydrogen bit, bicarbonate bit, potassium, sodium, any ion. So that is maintained in the, the second step that is tubular reabsorption. Now as the filtrate moves here and when it arrives in this city, there would be secretion of hydrogen ions, potassium ions, ammonia, drugs and toxic di directly into the DCT. This so it is called as tubular secretion. Tubular cells are secreting the substances directly into DCT. So it is called tubular secretion. And ions like sodium chloride, bicarbonate and water. The last, till the last your body tries to absorb, conserve the water if there is deficit in water in the body. And still further water will be also absorbed in the collecting duct. So that is regarding tubular secretion. Now urine pH is 6. In urine, the composition of urine is 98% of water, 2.5% organic substances, 1.5% inorganic substances. Color is pale yellow and that is due to pigment called urochrome. Hormones regulating the functions of kidney are antidiuretic hormone or you known as ADH or vasopressin. This is secreted from the posterior pituitary uh, gland in the brain. And this you will learn in the chapter chemical and this uh, nervous coordination. That is endocrinology. You will learn in detail about this. And the second hormone that is allosterone and this is secreted by the adrenal gland. This maintains, allosterone maintains the water and ionic balance and this, uh, this uh, regulates the permeability of the DCT. Let's see over here, I will just show you. In winter, what is your experience? If you are drunk, 2, two liter of water and you are made to sit in AC room whose temperature is about 16 degree. So what is the experience? You will frequently want to go to washroom, right? So the usage of water in metabolism by your body is less. You agree with this? So this is what I have written over here. In winter, less water is used in metabolism. You, you don't sweat, right? So more water more blood volume is there. I told you the blood volume in any human body should be between 5. So there is difference between male and female. So on an average it should be 5 liters, 5 to 5 and a half. So if there is more water in the body then this uh, value will be increased. So when in winter less water is used for metabolism. If less water is used and you have drunk more of water, then the blood volume increases. So whenever there is more blood volume in the body, the secretion of antidiuretic hormone from the posterior pituitary gland will be less. And when this ADH is less secreted, the permeability 
of DCT will be also less. As the permeability is less, there is less reabsorption of water. As less reabsorption is water, the volume, the quantity of urine produced will be more. So, urine is more. If I have to write here for summer, what I am going to write? In summer, more water is used in metabolism. You agree with this? You perspire a lot because of the heat. The, you need to drink more water, right? So, more water is used in metabolism. So, the blood volume becomes less. I can give you an example. If you have drunk uh, one liter water in the morning and you are asked to walk in sun, that is about 40, 40 to 42 degree and you don't have any provision of water supply with you. Uh, whenever, after some time, whenever you go at the end of the day, when you go to urination, the color of the urine would be definitely very dark yellow. The quantity produced would be scanty. And in winters, the color of the urine, when you have drunk lots of water, the water, uh, the urine would look dilute and watery. And in summers, if you had not taken enough of water in your body, the urine would look yellow, concentrated, and yes, it is scanty. In winters, it is more, that is profuse. So that is the difference. So in summer, I can write like this. Summer, what is going to happen? more water used in metabolism so what is going to happen less of blood volume less blood volume means more ADH secreted more ADH secreted means more permeability more permeability of water in DCT in this part and the collecting tubule. So what is going to happen? In summer, more water is used for metabolism. So the, what is going to happen? Blood volume is going to decrease. When there is less of blood volume, more ADH is secreted. When more ADH is secreted, the permeability of DCT and collecting tubule will be more. So, this more water is absorbed. So, what is in the end? Scanty urine. Urine formed is scanty. So, did you get it? So, that is about urine formation and I had told you in previous lecture also the act of passing urine in biology is referred as So, the zest, I, I would I want to ask you, what are the main functions of kidney when you have completed almost the whole uh, topic? So, there are two main functions. First is elimination of nitrogenous metabolic waste that are produced in the body. So, that is the one main function. Another is it maintains the ionic balance, I told you. How the ions, whenever you are dehydrated, you take up that ORS. So, that replaces when you take up the salt in you. So, these ions are basically the level is maintained in your body and osmoregulation that is water balance. So, kidney maintains the ionic and the osmoregulation. So, you can say water balance. So, first is excretion, excretory function that is elimination of elimination of nitrogenous nitrogenous metabolic waste product second is maintaining Ionic balance and it is also doing the function of osmo regulation that is water balance. 
the water in the body is maintained if you had enough of fluids in the form of like a tea coffee maybe lemonade buttermilk so you have taken more of fluids in the body and if it is winter they will be eliminated water will be the fluid part will be eliminated by more production of urine so that is how water balance in the body is maintained and as well it maintains the the ionic balance that is chloride sodium potassium calcium bicarbonate hydrogen ions and by maintaining the hydrogen and bicarbonate balance it maintains the ph of the blood and the ph of the blood is 7.4 on an average that ends with the topic formation of urine please like share and subscribe and do comment